Hi, I'm Tom Forsyth. I'm the chemist at Bridgepoint and I have an extensive rug background where I was a certified appraiser with the Oriental Rug Retailers from 1987. I want to introduce you to a type of rug which for a handmade rug it's the Persian style rug. When we talk about Persian, uh, Persia was Iran and that's where a lot of these designs emanated. One thing you need to know about this type of rug, um, you can classify these rugs as art under, underfoot uh, in the sense that Persian art was known for its Persian miniatures and very fine detail. And so that's reflected in the best of the Persian rugs where you have really fine detailed patterns, curves, and all that type of thing. So to create that detail, they created a knot called the Persian knot. In the Persian knot, you can make finer patterns, and also you can weave a tighter weave. So to give a, get a little curve in the rug, it takes about a few hundred uh, square knots per square inch just to get that curve. And when you uh, look at the back of the rug, you'll notice that if you go in real close at detail and look, you'll see that every knot has two nodes. So when you see the Persian rugs, the outline, you're going to see one line going this way. That means that half the knot is underneath, which means that's a depressed warp. Um, that gives you a much denser rug. Also what it does uh, from a cleaning perspective, you need to be aware that uh, dusting, there's a lot of dirt trapped down into those foundation threads. So you need to do a good job of dusting to get all the dirt out of this type of rug. So um, there's various patterns. Um, your, your Cerebend or mirror design, which is a great overall flowing uh, rug design. Um, it's great if, for dining rooms where you're not hiding medallions and such like that. Uh, you can have some detail, but also have open fields, as they call. Uh, if these open fields are ivory, then the more uh, open areas you have in any type of rug, that can create cleaning challenges from staining and, and that type, which is much more visible in those areas. So as a general rule in this style of rug, they're, they're Persian knots and they're usually depressed warp. Sometimes you, you have a rug such as this, in the real fine detail, you'll see that there are two nodes every time there's a line. There's never a place where there's just one little node. That means that in this particular rug, it's not a depressed warp. So when people count knots on the back, if you don't understand what knot you're looking at, you think this is a very fine rug, when in actuality it's about half the knots per square inch that you would be able to count. And that makes this rug much more flexible, doesn't have the uh, durability, that type of thing with it. So, but as a general rule, most of the Persian style rugs have a depressed warp with them, and this particular style does not have a depressed warp. Now, because of the multitude of colors, um, you need to do careful um, dye bleed test just to be aware of uh, what, you're, what you're doing, make sure you're not getting dye bleeds, because you're, you're looking at, in some rugs, 30 colors. So, Typically, when you're testing for bleeding, obviously it's the dark colors, the reds, the black, the blues. Um, those are the main things you need to be aware of that would actually show up if they were to transfer a little bit. Chinese rugs is our next category. And as Persian rugs were impacted by their art, Chinese rugs were impacted by their art. As you can see, they like to use a lot of open space. And uh, when they're using this open space with lighter colors, minor staining and whatever can still be visible afterwards. One other thing for a lot of the Chinese rugs, they're really heavy. They have thick yarn. And typically, they sculpture to give clarity to the design. So you don't have an even flat surface. You have a, a surface where there's peaks and valleys in it. Sometimes that can, when an area gets walked on quite a lot and creates some pile shift, give you a very noticeably visible uh, darker spot which can appear to be dirty. You know, you, you have various quality of Chinese rugs. This one happens to be the uh, 90 line, 5 eighths inches thick and closed back. 
So you, you don't see any of the foundation threads with this, meaning that the yarns are quite um, large and impacted together. So this is really a heavy rug that can wear for a long time. There are rugs, a lot of rugs with these type of patterns that have a tufted back where they're not hand knotted. They're shot with a gun through and then latex is put on it to hold the rug together and they put a canvas on the type. So you have a, a lot of rugs in that category. Um, generally speaking, your traditional Chinese rugs are uh, typically made in China. This one here is a very unusual rug. It has a lot of the characteristics of the Chinese. This one may have a little bit more pattern than most as this black one does. But this one actually is a Tibetan style rug with a different type of knot structure. Now this can be made in India today, but the original ones were from Tibet and were quite ex uh, expensive. It had the same characteristics with a lot of open area. You see a lot of contemporary designs in Tibetan rugs. So these are rugs that are well made, that can last for a lifetime. The main concern with these type of rugs is that they still look good, which in terms of having a protector like our Maxim Advance for wool is really important to help limit staining in these type of rugs. It's good for all rugs, but for rugs with open areas, you want to try to put something on it that when things are spilt, you can get remove the stain so you don't mar the look of the rug. This next category we're going to be talking about are flat weaves or flat woven rugs. And what we mean by that is there's no pile. So these rugs are totally the warp thread and the weft thread. So um, they're thin rugs, front and back, you'll see the pattern in most cases. There are some of the older style uh, flat woven rugs that may have a different appearance on the back. Um, these rugs have different names. The rugs made in India are called duris, and the rugs made in other parts of the world are called kaleems. Um, most of what I have here is a, a duri rug uh, made in India. Typically, these had contemporary patterns. Um, in terms of their art, there was an old, uh, the original style of the duri was a cotton duri made in India, had a little bit more detail than this. But these were mass marketed in the 70s and 80s. And since then, so this is one of the uh, hand woven rugs that you'll see in a lot of different places. So the ex cost of these can be a fraction of the cost of the Persian style and some of the Chinese style rugs. So you'll see them a lot. Um, the, the Kaleem rugs that can come from Romania, can come from Iran, Turkey, and China usually are darker colors. They, they have more of a geometrical pattern and they're similar in look and style to the uh, tribal type rugs. The difference is that they're flat woven. Now there are different types of flat weaves. Uh, for example, this is what's called a, a chain stitch out of India, a very delicate rug. So this would need to be cleaned very carefully. It easily could be caught with a wand edge or things like that. And it's very fine detail. Hopefully wherever it's used, it's either hung or used in a room with very little traffic. Um, there's also a weave called a sumac weave, which is a much more durable weave. You will see that they made that recently in Persian designs to make it look like an old rug. Um, so that's generally what you have. The, the downside with these as well is you need to be cleaning two sides, generally speaking. And with a lot of open area and a lot of light colors, you have that same issue of, of staining, of of a simple spot that you would never see on a Persian design rug can stand out. Um, also, generally speaking, since most people didn't pay a lot for these rugs, they're not really interested in paying a lot for cleaning. So you, sometimes you need to devise a system where you can clean them less expensively for the people who own them. Um, but they can be fun rugs and they're great for hanging on walls or put in rooms which don't get a lot of traffic and they can last a long time. Um, some of these rugs are, um, this rug in particular is, is over uh, 20 years old. Um, sometimes you'll get some repair needed. One other thing you need to look about, typically these rugs do not lie flat. They're curled on the edges, and that's always something you need to uh, tell people about um, and uh, be aware of when you're cleaning them. 
Now we come to one of my favorite type of rugs, tribal rugs. And when you think about tribal rugs, think about folk art. Every rug, a lot of the weavers will put their own individual characteristics to it. They use lively colors. They'll have pictures of chickens and of sheep and that type of thing. And even in Afghanistan, there's the Afghani war rug where you can see an AK-47 and tanks and grenades. So a lot of these rugs are very unique and very different and they reflect the life of the weaver. So the patterns in these rugs are closer to the person who actually makes it and it's a reflection of their art. And there's just a lot of fun rugs out there that are tribal. Now from a cleaning perspective, a couple things to be aware of. Generally speaking for tribal rugs, you're gonna have wool fringes. Where the other types of rugs that we've looked at today, they've used cotton fringes. Um, the other thing with these type of rugs, this is usually a Turkish knot, and if you hold this real tight, you'll see a corn rowing effect. Uh, Turkish knot, the knots come up together and there's always a gap in between. Typically for this type of rug, the Turkish knots, they do not have the depressed warp. So when you look on the back, there's two little nodes here, uh, which since every knot is, is wrapped around two threads, when you see two of the same color, that always means it's not a depressed warp. What that also means is, generally speaking, these are easier to vacuum and easier to dust. It's easier um, to get all of that out. Now, one other characteristic of them, since they are fun, and a lot of times they can be on the looms in the farmhouse for over the course of winter, is you can get some misshapen rugs where you'll have the top and the bottom be different widths. Now, this type of rug is a prayer rug um, with the prayer arch. This is actually from a Baluch tribe in Iran area. And the weave is characteristic of that area, but also the coloration is. Now, as you look at that, since it is misshapen, you can have a rug that's not square. And also, you can still have a tendency for edges to curl. Now, since a lot of these dyes are made in the villages and maybe by the villager, you need to always be aware of uh, color fastness. Um, that you don't have bleeders. Uh, like this particular rug we had tested and the reds are an issue. So you need to clean that in a special way. But one thing about these rugs, um, when they're cleaned properly, the colors just pop and they're just beautiful works of art that you get to handle. We're gonna talk about some of the machine-made category of rugs. Machine-made rugs may have a polypropylene or olefin face fiber. They may be wool face fiber as well, or even something different. But uh, let's start with the polypropylene face fiber. How are you going to know that's what it is? One way is by a burn test. There may also be a manufacturer's label on the back of the rug that identifies it for you. How are you going to know that it's machine made? Let's take a look at some of the characteristics. A rug is usually best identified from the back of the rug. You may see very quickly how even, straight, and neatly spaced the rows are across the back. All these yarns knotted in place so evenly is not something that is going to be done by hand. That tells you it's done by machine. With a closer look, you may also begin to see some of the stitching that holds the surging on the edge. The stitching is very straight, very evenly spaced. Again, an indication that it was done by machine rather than being done uh, by hand. The Surging over the edge will be very even, not uh, thicker in some places and thinner as it might be on handmade. So just the consistency, the evenness, the straightness tells you this is done by a machine. We're also going to be cleaning several other machine-made rugs today. Let's take a look at what some of these are. We have another machine-made kind of the match piece to this. 
also with polypropylene fiber or olefin. This is a machine made olefin. What you'll notice different about this than the first two rugs we looked at is this one has a fringe. So machine made rugs may or may not have a fringe. A handmade rug almost always uh, is going to have some fringe or end finish here that is made from the warp yarns continuing. But a close look here, you can see these white threads where this fringe has been sewn on. It's not simply a continuation of the warp yarns, but it's something that's been added on to give the fringe as a decorative element. Machine-made rugs may also be tufted rather than woven, tufted into a backing and latex in place, much like uh, an installed carpet is. So here's a synthetic acrylic face fiber. Again, we learned that from the burn test and simply tufted into the backing. Here's another rug with a fringe with the oriental style of design on it. But once again, the backing helps us to identify that it's machine made because of the even rows of stitches, the even surging along the side, and we can see where the fringe has been sewn on, an indication of machine made. This one happens to have cotton foundation, but the face yarn is rayon or faux silk, art silk, different terminology for artificial silk. It may look like silk. Sometimes your client may even think they have a silk rug, but this is rayon. This group of rugs is also machine made but they have wool face yarns, for the most part cotton foundation yarns. If we look at it on the back again, once again, very evenly spaced and very straight rows of knots that have been woven into this backing. The edge finish is very straight and even helps us identify it as machine made. Burn testing the face fiber though tells us that it's wool and the fringe is cotton. So now we're dealing with natural fibers rather than with synthetic fibers. With natural fibers, the wool and cotton being staple yarns, overly aggressive cleaning, can make it fuzzy and pull out uh, fibers. You also have considerations about using lower pH, uh, prevent browning. You have the greater possibility of shrinkage. So natural fibers are going to be cleaned differently than the synthetic fibers that we've already talked about in the first group. This rug is also machine made. Something a little bit different about it. The fringe on here is uh, been colored. So it's not the natural color of the cotton, but there's been a, a wash applied to color it and it's intended to be uh, a darker brown. But again, we can look at the edge. We see the surging that's been put on is sewn. There's the nice even stitching that sewed that edge on rather than putting it on by hand. And the rows of knots are very even. You may not be able to see this uh, on video, but if you see this type of rug close up, you'll see that the yarns that form the knots are tied around the weft yarns rather than being tied around the warp yarns another indication of machine made. Almost every uh, handmade rug 
the knots are wrapped around the warp yarns where the majority of machine made rugs the knots are tied around the weft yarns. In your rug definitions and terminology vocabulary one of the things you learned was abrash. That's a linear change in the color where the person weaving the rug changes from one batch of yarn to another that's been dyed slightly different, the equivalent of a dye lot change. Even in a machine made rug, that quality of abrash can sometimes be intentionally done to simulate it, make it more look like handmade. So here among the dark blue We're also seeing some lines that are black put in to simulate abrash. So the entire field, which you might expect would all be dark blue, has got the bands of black mixed in with it. We also would have hopefully noticed this in our pre-inspection that much of the fringe has been worn away here. Very likely this has been cleaned with some harsher chemicals, some oxidizers or bleaches that weakened the fabric and with foot traffic and vacuuming it began to pull them apart so uh, in some cases the fringe is almost non-existent. This rug is also one of the machine made rugs with a wool face fiber and cotton foundation. A few things we want to point out about it. We can also see the abrash on this but not nearly as distinctive as on the black and blue but uh, we see some changes in the color of brown across the field here and in this corner here's some of the kind of yellow gold that changes to brown gives us that appearance of abrash. Also a very worn fringe, again something we'd hope to pick up on inspection. What makes this rug different from any of the others we've looked at though is essentially it's been woven at 90 degrees turned from the rest of the rugs. The warp yarns on this run from edge to edge and the weft yarns run this way which might appear to be the length of the rug is actually the width of the rug and so it's, uh, it's been cross woven. Looking closely at the back we can distinguish the weft yarns from the warp yarns which are a little bit heavier and see that it's just been turned on the loom and uh, woven the opposite direction and the fringes are formed from the weft rather than for the from the warp yarns. The group of rugs you see now are miscellaneous category. A few different things that we've all put together and going to talk about some of the cleaning considerations that uh, apply to each one of these. This largest rug, the main field of it is sisal. Sisal may be a natural color or it may be over dyed a darker shade of brown. Few things to be aware of when you're cleaning sisal or some of the other similar yarns like seagrass, uh, bamboo, uh, core which is made from uh, coconut husks and such is that the natural coloring in them may wash or bleed so they tend to be sensitive color wise to moisture and you may get uneven coloration in them. This rug in addition to being made of sisal is also had a custom made border sewn on it of a uh, wool fiber and it's cut seamed together 
This is very sensitive to moisture as well. The adhesive back, latex that's on the back, kind of keeps the back in place, but as it absorbs moisture, it wants to swell, which creates little ripples in it. So for another reason, besides being made of sisal, this rug is sensitive to moisture because the border will curl. It could be uh, necessary to tack it out and stretch it back out if you get it too damp, but we try to avoid overly wetting these rugs so we don't have issues with either change in the color of the sisal or with ripples and wrinkles in it. So this one's been cleaned with encapsulation cleaning, uh, a low moisture process. It can be cleaned using the Brush Pro and dry powder is an alternative way to clean this that uses very little moisture. Uh, this was cleaned with NCAP 2 uh, our EncapuClean 2 It had been sitting in a dining room with quite a number of food spills, but we're able to get a very nice appearance even though it had that traffic and food spills with a low moisture of cleaning. You can use the Brush Pro along with the Brush Pro powder for these moisture sensitive rugs. We have another sisal rug. This one is sisal completely. It doesn't have a sewn on border of another fabric, another type of fiber, and it's somewhat coarser. Uh, it's been folded and had a few uh, wrinkles in it from being folded. We want a low moisture clean this as well, but we can add a little bit of uh, steam heat to help remove these wrinkles as we get to the cleaning process for this rug. This rug is wool, both the foundation and the face yarns. It's entirely made of, of wool. It's in a Berber style. You'll see the very thick looped pile to it. Because of the dark blue color, we're not too much concerned about bleeding, but there is uh, jute in with the foundation. So although it's mainly wool, there is some jute in here that could bleed with exposure to moisture. If we had a light colored field, if this was a white or off-white beige colored field that we had on the rug, that bleeding would be of great concern to us. On a very dark background, it could uh, have the jute bleed or wick brown to the surface, cause some browning, not be easily observed but we're still going to use a low moisture cleaning on this type of rug. This is a similar looking rug. It's also dark blue in color. It has the, the large loops in it, but this is a rag style rug. Various scrap material is, is taken and woven together to make this style of rug. And, uh, Although they look dissimilar, when you see them side by side, you can tell the difference between one that's made from fibers and one that's been made from rags that have already been woven into fibers and then cut. Since a variety of different types of material might be used in a rag rug, they take scraps from a lot of places, uh, you'd almost have to test every inch of it to know how it's going to respond to moisture and to your cleaning process. So to be on the safe side, this is a rug we're also going to clean with low moisture. Not to say that it couldn't be cleaned with higher moisture, but you're taking some chances with it because you haven't tested every inch of it or it's not practical to test every bit of fiber in it. So the rag rug, unless it's excessively soiled, we're generally going to clean with low moisture. If it is excessively soiled, then uh, we may uh, do a submersion or a, a more high moisture cleaning with the client's authorization. Our next miscellaneous type of rug is a braided rug. Here's a few things to beware of when you come across this. The stitching that holds the various wraps together often gets worn and undone, and so 
there can be separations. Be sure and check, make sure that it's tightly held together and not going to come apart in the cleaning. If there is any damage to it, you want to make sure that's noted on your inspection, get approval to do that repair before it's cleaning, because if there's just a little bit of damage to it and you clean it, that damage is going to get worse during the cleaning process, so you want to do the repair prior to cleaning. What, are, what is inside all these fibers? You can see the fibers on the surface and there's a variety of different materials and colors used that you'd have to test for color fastness, but there's also material inside at the core. That could be as simple in some cases as newsprint wrapped up. And of course, when you get that ink wet, it's going to bleed black. It could be like a crepe paper type material. It could be yarn that's not color fast. You want to know what's inside here before you begin cleaning it because what's inside might bleed. So you can take a small crochet needle or something of that sort, run it in between a couple of the yarns and pull out just a little bit of the filling material so that you know what's inside before you begin cleaning this rug.